All right, JB, people are here. They ready. Let's get this thing started. A partner kickback, politics, pop culture, music, sex, and sports. But um, JB, what's the name of the podcast? Nigga, it's a pod named Kickback. A pod named Kickback. It's like a tribe called Quest. You say, you say the whole thing. thing. <laughs> Welcome to a pod named Kickback, also known as the Black CNN and a Revolution. We'll, we'll be, be televised. televised. I'm no break snow, the righteous ratchet. If you throw it, I'll catch it, unless it's Corona. I don't want that. <laughs> but oh aside God. from that, oh <laughs> if you throw it, I'll catch it. If you got it, I'll match it. Every Monday. Monday. We right back at it. I am the Black Savage. Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? It's JB Frank. I'm that gangster geek coming to you every Monday. <clears throat> representing NWA, Nerds with Attitude. Happy Monday, everybody. I hope you guys are safe and social distancing out there. Welcome to a virtual pod named Kickback. Last week, we did the audio. Now we got all this shit together. Yeah, there it is. I had to go get the mug, JB. <laughs> there it go, there it go. Let them know. We got uh, all this shit together now. Kickback. Right. So, y'all, thank you for joining us live on Facebook. We love you. Let's get it cracking, dude, shall we? Yeah. And then on uh, Facebook Live, the Facebook Live, we can have each other, which is why we're doing this on Zoom. And then we're projecting it to Facebook. I'm not sure if we can add other people on Zoom, JB. So, I guess we'll adjourn yeah, this. We can, about that. we can absolutely add other people on Zoom. Okay, so maybe we'll ask somebody before the show is over. Yeah, yeah, shoot me. Yeah, shoot me over whoever it is, and I'll invite them whenever you're ready. Bet, bet, bet. So, so um, as we start every show, our high low of the week. JB, what was your high? What was your low? Uh, let's see here. The, the high of this week was, I mean, frankly, you know, just be feeling a lot better. Um, I told you guys last week that I, you know, I was dealing with a slight fever and a little chest congestion, um, basically corona symptoms. You know, I've been relaxing, resting, taking a shitload of vitamins, drinking water, getting out, doing social distancing exercise with my dog going to basically a deserted park and walking my dog. And now I feel a lot better. I haven't had a temperature for several days. Um, so, you know, that is my high. My low, the low is just, again, this whole Corona thing, man. Um, I try not to let it get me down, but at the same time, we're all dealing with this whole situation you know what i'm saying and it just still bothers me you know it bothers me that some of my friends and and my family are just so worried about this whole thing so that's one of the things that we're actually going to focus on in this show actually we're not going to bring you down with all of the sad crazy nope. corona bullshit right we're going to focus on we're going to focus on thinking of the solution not the problem first of all and looking at the lighter side of life and some of the things that you know you can do to live thrive and survive during this whole situation yep yep good shit good shit my um my high of the week is just uh relaxing my nerves man it's like calming down and breathing and you know and just doing what i need to do um not stressing out as an extroverted person as a person that battles depression um, being stuck in the house by myself um, with no real human contact for several weeks has been crazy for me. Yeah. And um, dealing with that has been, it has been my low because I like to be around people. Like, right. I, I like to touch people. And, and I don't mean like, like <laughs> but like, I'm, I'm an affectionate nigga. Like, JB can tell you, every time I see him, I give him a hug. I yeah, that's like, hey, real. Hey, baby. I, I hug my niggas. You know, I love you. I, I, I give hugs. And I do the that's same real. thing with my women friends and, and women I date. So to not be able to touch another person, I haven't touched anybody. We went disc golfing and Jeremy almost failed. And I grabbed him. We was going up that hill. But that's the only time I touched a person in like a month was grabbing my bro so he don't fall. 
So um, it's been rough. Right, so <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. I'm trying to think of the last human being I touched. Well, other than myself, but <laughs> hey, 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 wait a minute. This ain't that kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. We all know what time it is during this corona, corona, corona. You know what you're doing. You know the niggas got corona, corona bonus. <laughs> Somebody gonna call me corny for that. <laughs> We're gonna start calling it the Corona Arm, right? Yeah, yeah. Right on the wrong shit. <laughs> I tell y'all, I want, I want a chick that's nice and Corona thick. All she do is eat and do TikTok. Yeah, that, 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 that. I'm with it. Yeah. But um, so that was my low, and my high is just um coming out of that and being able to laugh and smile and joke despite that. Right. You know what I'm, saying? I'm working from home. Um, I'll show you guys really quickly. I got my little setup here. Um, the JB helped me put together. And I'm just, you know, I'm working from home. And this is my station, my desk, as you guys can see. So it's like when I used to work from home last year when I broke my ankle. I was like, look at the sofa. That's the set. That's what we normally get with the records on the wall. Right. <laughs> So um, the high is just being in good spirits despite all that shit. Because I was in fucked up spirits and everybody like, nigga, chill out, calm down. And I'm like, ah! So I'm, I'm in really, really good spirits today. That's my high, JB. I hear that. I hear that. Well, since you showed everybody your workspace, let me show them mine. So, all right. There we go. So you can see. You, you got see the other, up. Yeah, got, got the... Uh, Got the second monitor, the second computer, the keyboard, the whole nine yards. Yeah, we got to do this because I mean, it's pretty much this is pretty much my command center now. This is my office. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> how you how you guys doing with the whole working from home thing? And how many of you have not transitioned? Oh. And I want to dedicate this episode, JB. We don't really dedicate episodes to people, but I want to dedicate this episode to everybody that's on the front lines. And I don't mean, well, I'll tell you what I mean. I mean the grocery store clerk. Absolutely. Stock person at the grocery store at Walmart. Absolutely. At Target. I mean the fast food workers that are cooking. I mean the people that are brave enough to do Uber Eats and DoorDash and bring you your food. The restauranteurs that are staying open and providing food. Um, the CVS employees. I went into a guy at CVS and I was like, my nose is running. I got Corona. He was like, nigga, calm down. Do you have allergies? I'm like, yes. And he's like, this is like the worst thing in the history of Georgia. Chill, but to make you feel better, get some of this. Get some of that. Was and it the time at the uh, CVS over by the Publix down the, down the road, uh, south yeah. of us? Yes, this is Yes, past that Publix. When is this past that Publix? Yep, yep. Was yep. it the dude with the dreads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, dude. I know, dude. Yeah. He, um, he told me he wanted to do a podcast like ours. His boy is a rapper, and he graduated from Morehouse. And I was like, I'm a rapper, <laughs> and Davey graduated from Harvard. And he was like, oh, I'm going to take y'all out. So, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, he, he was just like, you know, and um, all of those people that are risking their lives, man. Absolutely. People are literally risking their lives oh, to provide us. The janitorial workers who are cleaning the grocery stores, who are cleaning the carts. When I went up to Publix the other day, they had a whole section of carts that were thoroughly wiped down, and they had people out there wiping down all the carts. And once they were done, they would put them to the left. So you got you see a team of people over here wiping them down, and then the team of then the clean carts here. And I was like, thank you. Just fucking thank you, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, shout out to the Publix in general, my G, because they were, um, when they had them available, they were actually providing people with latex gloves upon entry in the Publix. You would walk mm -hmm. in and there would be a box of gloves there waiting for you. And somebody with rubber gloves would reach in, grab a pair of gloves, and then sit them down in front of you so you could pick them up and put them on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one time for Jeremy, who was on that front line, absolutely uh, risking it all. Love you, bro, my G. Yeah, no um, doubt, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. 
so that was the a dedication. We don't normally do that, but I feel like it was necessary this week, JB. Absolutely. Really say thank you to them. Absolutely. What we got on, um, what's our first, what's our, uh, my left stroke just went viral. Just went viral. The the Instagram live battles that have just been blowing up oh, yeah. social media, new. Man, let me tell y'all something. This thing is taking over all the social media. Even I went on and did a playlist today. But forget me, let's talk about the big battles. Uh, let's talk about Little John and T-Pain. Yeah. Now, they had a battle um, Friday night, I think. And it was just dope. It's just great to see people who made some of your favorite songs play them. Maybe give you a little history behind the song. Mm -hmm. it, it's just it's just dope, man. It's just, it's like, ah. I remember that song when I was 2004. I remember because I was fucking with Ashanti back then. You know, whatever your memory oh, is. God. I'm guy, just saying, I'm just saying. You and goddamn no. Ashanti, Jesus Christ. <laughs> there was another good one that happened just before the weekend. Um, the Who was that, Storch and uh, Manny, Manny Fresh? Yeah, Manny Fresh. Yeah, yeah, Scott Storch. That was a good one. I, I knew Scott Storch would win it because he just had too many hits. Manny, most of Manny's music comes from the Hot Boys, you know, right. Juvenile, BG, right. Turk, Wayne, you know, a decade ago. Right. He got some Young G's and some T.I., but it's still a decade ago. Right. So he just didn't have the catalog, but Manny is a beast. He is amazing. He is not to be slept on. No he is not to be played with. But he just don't have the catalog. Yeah, it's just that simple. Just that simple. It's like podcasts with us, JB. Like, we did 51 episodes last year. Right. We've only missed one week this year. Other podcasts just don't have the catalog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We stay on the charts. Yeah. Because we stay putting out that quality. There it is. There it is. That's it's not. It's all about it's all about keeping productive and putting out that material because that's what the people want, honestly. Especially when you're trying to be current and stay current, like we do. I mean, we're a current show. It's just that simple. No other way to put it. No no other way around it. And that makes sense in terms of the battles too. Like if you're more mm -hmm. prolific, then you just got more shit to pick from. You know what I'm saying? Um, which is why fucking Prince would blow away. Michael Jackson in a beat battle any day of the week and twice on Sunday. And Mike made ridiculous, ridiculous hits, but it's like what, like 15, 20 of them jumps? You know? <laughs> well, I, I, that's a tricky one. I do think Chris will win, but don't forget Jackson 5 all the way up. Well, yeah, I understand I that. Got a yeah, Mike has a personal catalog, but Prince not only has his personal catalog, Prince also has all of the other shit that he's done for everybody else. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but, but Mike got Mike got Prince on years, though. Mm. That would be an no interesting question. battle. No question about that. Would no. you want to do that battle? I'll take Mike, you take Prince? That would be fun. That'd be a lot of fun, sure. All Let's right, we're going to do it sometime next week. We're going to do it sometime next week. Maybe Got Friday fun. night or Saturday night. How'd that sound? Um, yeah, I, fuck it. Why not? <laughs> it ain't like I'm going to be something else. So we're going to do it now. I, now, my personal favorite is Prince. But just for the sake of argument, I'll take Mike. JB will take Prince. And I'll give, we'll give you 20 songs a piece. So okay. we'll do, you know, 20 songs back to back to back to back to back to back to back. All right, JB, we done, we done already done it. Neither one of them are here to do it. So we will do it for them. There we Nobody go. bite our idea. Nobody steal it. Thank Our you. Our name Kickback is doing you. the ultimate battle. Michael Jackson versus Prince. And we're going to do it Friday or Saturday, JB? Um, let's, let's do it Friday. Because we'll, we'll okay. fuck around and have a virtual party or something going on Saturday night. Who, who knows? You know, Friday, Friday at uh, 8, 9. Uh, eight would be good. Let's do eight. Friday at eight. Friday at eight. We doing Prince versus Michael Jackson. Goddamn. Pardon and kickback is on their game. I swear, <laughs> I swear for God. Hey, 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 Mel, what you think? The Michael Jackson Prince battle. That's got to be the best battle ever. Who can do a better battle than that? Like nobody. Like that. That. That's the damn battle. So, yeah. Uh, moving on to our um. Well. 
there was supposed to be a baby face versus Teddy Riley battle tonight, which would have been the best battle, but they postponed it. They're saying nobody canceled, but it was still postponed. Mm -hmm. um, I, when, I, when I went live, I actually played some Prince, I mean, some uh, Teddy Riley and Babyface and listened to it and kind of did my own little judgments on it. But um, I don't know, man. I'm disappointed in that one. It was supposed to be happening right now, JB. We were going to move the show up to four right. a week ago. Right. I had my outfit picked out. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely wanted to check that joke out. It was going to be, I mean, you talking about, I mean, that's just, Teddy Riley and Babyface were our childhoods in terms of music. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. Look, If you look at their catalog, the artists that they wrote for, they pretty much, they were the, the mid to late 80s and all of the 90s. Like, there's just no way around it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that would have been great. That I, th I hope they get that one together. I, I'd straight like to see that. No doubt about it. I want to see that jump. Hell yeah. I mean, Teddy Riley ushered in the new Jack Swing. Right. Telling your face ushered in the A-Town sound. It's like <laughs> two of the biggest, you know, you could throw Jimmy Jam and Trey Lewis in there, but I think Jimmy Jam and Trey Lewis would be number three. I think number one and two is baby facing Teddy Riley. Yeah, no way around it. On that, I would agree with you on that. That's why I was saying like they they are the the mid to late eighties and the nineties for us in terms of music. Like yeah. you know, everybody else is kind of you know, yeah, they did great things, but them motherfuckers just ran those two decades in terms of R and B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I, they wrote a lot of songs that I sang to Karen Beverly in my head. They wrote it. <laughs> They wrote him. <laughs> yeah, you were the only one. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, Mel. Mel thinks, well, I, I actually I actually am inclined to agree with her. She says she thinks that Babyface will crush Teddy Rock. I, I, I'm inclined to well, agree. Well, I'll say this. I do not agree with that. Um, I am going for Babyface in that battle. Okay. Teddy Riley had Big Daddy Kane, Heavy D, all the, Dougie Fresh. This is called a show. Like, he got rap hits. Babyface don't handle rap hits. So when it comes to that up-tempo New Jack swing, Teddy Riley will kill Babyface. Oh, no. When it comes to the ballads, Babyface will kill Teddy Riley. But Teddy Riley still has you can have a piece of my love, dumb bitch. Yeah. What, gang, what, what gangster rap song does Babyface have? What party rap song does Babyface have? Yeah, but Baby Baby Babyface has a much broader catalog in terms of R and B, and then you got to look at artists like TLC and the like who also fall under Babyface's umbrella. Um, yeah, don't don't forget JB Teddy Riley did Michael Jackson's Dangerous album. I understand that. I understand that the entire album. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Michael Jackson, nigga. Yeah, but you know, you gotta give Babyface end of the road though. So that's one song. <laughs> and we gotta get baby we gotta get Babyface the bodyguard soundtrack. Or that Whitney Houston. Amongst I, um well, what's the song I will always love you? And I yeah, will always love you. We gotta give him that. Yeah. But then Teddy, Teddy Riley gonna turn around and go, uh, um, um, uh, shit, any song off Dangerous. He gonna hit you with that. Well, I mean. Remember the time. He yeah. Like, you remember the time. He gonna, you know, he got shit, man. Who Teddy wrote, got shit. Who wrote Waterfalls? By TLC. I think Dallas Austin, but it might be Babyface. It might be. Shit. I don't know, JB. That's a good question. But it might be. I I'm going to find out. How about I, I, I have a computer here. How about I do that? <laughs> <Waterfall>. <laughs> 
by TLC. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, now everything is moving in slow motion. But that's a good one. Waterfalls, TLC. I mean, Babyface is my favorite out of him and Teddy Riley. However, I know Teddy Riley got some shit. Yeah, you just play you just playing devil's advocate, nigga. I ain't mad at you. Um, does it say? Maybe I need to write who wrote. Who wrote? I know my boo uh left eye wrote her verse. Rest in peace to left eye. Yeah, of um, that was Rico Wade. Nah, that was that was the, the underlings, the outcast, the outcast Atlanta production team. Oh it shit. wasn't it wasn't um babyface. Interesting. But I mean that, that is a good battle though. That's a good battle though. But we our battle gonna be the best one ever. When we do Michael Jackson versus Prince, we shutting the whole internet down, nigga. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Mel said Babyface wins with TLC. Hmm. I don't know, Mel. Teddy Riley has Michael Jackson. You put TLC above Michael Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. People forget. Uh, Mel said she, I thought she missed something. We broke down the fact that Teddy Riley did Michael Jackson's Dangerous album. And that's, that outranks TLC. So, you know, the battles, I'm saying the battle was very, very even. I'm rooting for Babyface, but I have a fear that Teddy Riley got it by that much. Yeah, um, and, and, all of, uh, and all of Babyface's, uh, you know, all of the hits that he did in the, in the 90s and then particularly in, um, in the 80s aren't coming to mind immediately right now. I personally feel like um, Babyface uh, probably has a broader set of bigger hits. But that's just my gut. I don't have the I don't have the full He has like he has more pop hits. Like he's done Celine Dion and a lot of those artists. Right, right. But Teddy Riley did Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I, I, I keep saying that because that means something. It, it means <laughs> everything that I'm saying it means. Like babyface got Celine Dion. Teddy Riley got Michael Jackson. Yes, it's a different. little different. It's a little different. Yeah, it's no that. So you can't out pop. You're not going to out pop Teddy Riley. As much as we want to give Babyface credit for his white shit, and I will always love you with Whitney Houston, Teddy Riley had Michael Jackson. You can't pull the pop card. He had the King of Pop, the entire album. Only Quincy Jones has done an entire album with Michael Jackson. Yeah, I mean we're we're talking about a we're talking about a beat battle more or less though, and and what would come and well, what, well a song battle yeah, not a, yeah. Not just beat the song yeah right, and if, he, right. if he breaks out ten Michael Jackson songs you think Babyface got something that can stand up to ten Michael Jackson songs I don't I don't know that I don't know that I'm gonna find uh, ten songs that I'm gonna love off of the Dangerous album though new Ten on the Dangerous album. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna find ten on the Dangerous album. That's arguably my. I mean, we all gonna go with Thriller. Some people go off the wall, but Dangerous was like, it was the comeback. You got Jam, um, the niggas that the fuck with, funk with, whatever that shit. Um, the joke with Slash playing a good song. Give it to me. See always over in a god of soul. And then I, don't I, I, I remember the the <laughs> album very oh how about, how about, who is it? Is it my brother? Is it my father? Yeah. Who I, is it? Yeah, it was again not not my favorite <laughs> Michael Jackson. <album. laughs> who you is it? Fuck, but that don't that don't change how I feel about the joke. <laughs> Like, remember the time <laughs> yeah i mean uh so you got uh jam whatever why you want to trip on me whatever in the closet yeah she drives me wild yeah remember the time that's that's my jam can't let her get away whatever heal the world bullshit um black or white yeah yeah black or white was kind of kind of cool um 
Who is it? Nah, give it. That's to my me. joke. Who is it? That's my shit. Nah, I like give in to me. Give in to me was my. Nah, I was thinking that. He always takes it with the heart of gold. Um, Will you be there? Was my jam too. I like the. Yeah, believe it or not, we went to church and shit at the end of that job. Yeah, that was free Willie. Yeah, I, musically, I like that job. Keep the faith, nah. Gone too <laughs> soon, nah. The title song, dangerous, nah. Whatever. So yeah, like three, three, maybe three songs for me off this jump. Where I'd be like, oh shit. Nah, the other ones. Well, okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, but, but, but as soon as Aaron Hall starts saying. I do love you, you dumb bitch. He yeah, that might, that might make things a little yeah. interesting. Well, he called he called a girl a dumb bitch in the song, and she get real. Yeah, but then you gotta. I bought a ticket, got an eye. Let's see. <laughs> I was hey, ready. That's the deal, that. right there. They too young, JB. They don't know about that. But all at once. And Angel set that ring. Oh, fuck, I'm fucking up the words. Had to think of something quick. That was my favorite song. I said... Man, will say Babyface got uh, 10 songs to go up against Dangerous. I agree. I'm going for Babyface. That's my guy. Right. I'm just saying, don't sleep on Teddy. He got hits. Fair enough. Fair he enough. created New Jack Swing. Like, Fair he enough. created it. Like, 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 let's not, you know, like, don't dismiss that. And don't think that you can go super pop and go over Teddy's head. Because I will always love you. For every I will always love you, there's a remember the time. Fair don't enough. Fair, enough. Fair um, enough. Now, for everybody that's quarantined, this is for the couples and the single people. Couples, how you maintaining? Single people, how you maintaining? And we're going to just give our thoughts on being quarantined if we were in a relationship or quarantined if we were single. Now, we both happen to be single. Um, so we're going to give you our thoughts on this whole quarantine thing and sex during quarantine. Wow. Mm. And no haircut and no mustache trim. I look crazy as hell. But, uh, yeah, um, no, no sleeping, but Babyface definitely going to give him that work. And I Will Always Love You was a Dolly Parton song first. That's true. So technically, that takes away from Babyface, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah, that's so Babyface true. loses that. Well, yeah, you know? that's, that's, that's real. And I was thinking that when you said it. But, I mean, there were, there were other songs. I mean, that, that album uh, was, was kind of crazy. The Bodyguard soundtrack was kind of crazy. There were a couple of other. It was, I have nothing, nothing, nothing. Really? JB, you know that was my shit. You know that was my shit. Me and JB, <laughs> me and JB made a bet. He bet me, fuck, what was it? I, I bet him, I think, the Bodyguard soundtrack versus some other albums, Cowboy Redskin Game, and the fucking Redskins won. I Look, you had Bodyguard that soundtrack, and I had something else. I remember that shit. And you won. Yes, it was that night when uh when fucking uh what's his name ran a, ran the touchdown. It was a Monday night football game. You can't yep. my parents. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that shit. Damn. <laughs> Mel say uh she's single, but she still see her friend. Now I'm gonna tell y'all a, a story about seeing friends. I've been telling friends, no, I don't wanna see you. I ain't even seen JB. I ain't seen JB about two weeks. So I'm like, if I ain't seeing my brothers, I ain't even really tripping on seeing no act like, like I, I, my iCloud, my iCloud pop. I, I, I have footage, you know what I'm saying? That'll, that'll, that'll get me through. Um, I had a homegirl be like, yeah, I'm gonna come through Monday. I was like, mm. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I'll be honest, last night, I got lit. I was listening to all the DJ battles. I was in the house lit. I was on my phone like, hey, you know, bring your ass through. <laughs> I was ready to risk it all last night, JB. I was like, fuck Corona. I'm ready to risk it all. <laughs> Free your ass. 
<laughs> yeah, this this whole isolation thing really has not been cool at all. Um, it's shut down. It shut down all so socialization for me. Um, you know, I was you know lining up lining up dates and shit for the weekends to come and then all of a sudden this corona shit happened you know i, I was talking to folk like oh yeah you know we should get together and do this this weekend and we should do that <laughs> now we ain't doing nothing and nah, nah i'm good i'm good i'm gonna stay my ass in the house by myself and mm -hmm. uh, and chill until this shit blows over so yeah um it would have been not, it would have been nice to be in a relationship, but honestly, at this point, I, me and whoever probably would have got on each other's fucking nerves so bad at this point. <laughs> I don't know. And that's another thing. People just breaking up, you know, behind this shit. It, it, it's it, it's it's not a, a good look. All this motherfucker niggas. Well, is I mean, imagine oh, you cooped up with the same motherfucker for like two weeks straight. You literally can't see nobody else. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a I lot. mean, it is, but see, like, I've been in relationships where um, I, I've lived with a woman, I'm sure, you know, as you, as you have as well, and I'll be in my room doing my thing, and you be in a living room or whatever. Well, I'm where with a PlayStation now. So I'm in the living room with the PlayStation, you in the bedroom with the other TV, and we can go, you know, we can do our social distancing. Like, well, I'm, I'm all here reading a book, you in there reading another book. Like, I, I was very good at separating and, and, and finding my own space. Um, so I don't know how that would work. I guess it depends on your partner. But well, I know with me, that that's never been a problem for me. That's the thing, though. A lot of people, a lot of people, especially when they get in a relationship, they have uh, they have difficulty finding isolated space sometimes. So if they're in the same house, you know, so some some people unfortunately think that they should always be together when they're in the same house, like literally in the same room. Some people just move like that, and that shit can get on your fucking nerves real, real quick. I uh, I'm kind of speaking from personal experience, <laughs> <laughs> but but um, you know if you're someone who wants a little isolation time and you're dealing with a partner who doesn't understand what the fuck that is. That can get real bad sometimes. <laughs> that's why I like yeah, it. And I, and, I, and I don't put that all on a partner. A lot of people don't know how to say they want isolation time. That's real. They don't know how to say it. And they just want it and just don't get it and just, ah. But it's like, if you say, hey, you know, for the next four hours, I'm going to go do this, you go do that. It's nothing against you. I just need a little personal time. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to have fun and we're going to do this. But just give me a couple hours and, and then you can take this time and do whatever you need to do. And then we can take care of all that shit and then come back together great. People don't do that, though. They just sit around quiet like, I wish I had time. I wish I had some personal time. And it's like, I wish you would have fucking said it. There it is. So I, I, I look at motherfuckers like that and I'm like, eh, eh. Because I know how to vocalize that. And from my experience, I know how to say it in a non-offensive way. So I can tell a woman I want a little bit of time and she won't feel away. She may miss me. She may want extra time, but it isn't going to be an issue or a beef unless she just on some bullshit and then well, you can't really do shit with a motherfucker on bullshit. You just stuck, you know? Well, and so, and so my experience. Come on in the building. Hey, my experience was uh, with someone who was, but frankly on some bullshit so whatever um, <laughs> um you know enough about that um but at the end of the day you're absolutely right i mean communication is key and honestly you know i gotta keep it a buck with you you know if i had the choice between going through this shit alone and going through this shit with somebody else i'd probably rather be with somebody else <laughs> right <laughs> because right. you know Honestly, when you're in that kind of familial situation, if you got it, they probably got it. So there's not really a whole lot of isolation in the house that's happening. You know what I'm saying? And just being able to be in the same space at the same time with somebody would be would be dope. You know? Um, I agree. And, and getting my dick sucked right now would be dope. 
I'm just I'm just saying. I know you know people are like, oh my God, you said that. Well, yeah, I did. I, well, I meant it. I too. was trying to speak euphemistically, but you so wonderfully just took it right to the. I mean, yeah, because you, you were talking about spending time, and I'm like, yeah, that's important, too. I mean, well, I can, well spending time, fuck it, nigga. Come on you now. You didn't say that, because you could have been binging Tiger King. I was speaking. You could have been going binging Tiger King, King, or binging Peaky Blinders, or season three of Ozark. <laughs> I don't know what you meant. You can do you all of those things have meant just that. sex. <laughs> okay, okay, well, yeah, 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 I agree. <laughs> But I, but I also agree with the uh, binge in the TV shows and shit. Like, my relationships have always been, you know, I, I'm very sexual, but it always been the other shit, too. Watching something on TV, reading the book. One of my best things I love to do with a woman is, is, is start a book together and, and come back and discuss the book. So I, I would enjoy that, too. Um, right now, I'm just sitting here chilling, and uh, I've, been, uh, I've been FaceTiming a lot more. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? How you doing? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> right. <laughs> just, just a look at a motherfucker, Marco Polo and shit. Let, let, let's see what the kickbackers are saying. F say, uh, F say I'm talking funny. What? I sound like I bit my tongue. <laughs> he said I sound like I bit my tongue. <laughs> said you sound like Cool G rap in this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm on the road to the wrists. <laughs> Oh, the gift's wife. I get it. Oh, Jeremy said, this shit and this relationship is actually fun. We are well balanced at home. Nice thing is that we have two TVs. So he does his thing. She does her thing. The main thing is communication. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Of course. Of course. That's what I be telling Ashanti. I'm like, I'm in Atlanta. She's in L.A. But we still have to maintain our relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll be telling you. Kickbackers with the Ashanti shit. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Why I sound like, what else did I sound like? I bit my tongue. Why I sound like that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. It's the Zoom app, F. It's the Zoom app. And what I warned, Warren jumped in and said, stay safe. We doing our best to stay safe, Warren. Hope you're safe too. Um, hope all your family and loved ones are safe. A lot yeah. of our family and loved ones are on this live. So shout out to y'all. We know y'all safe because we talk to y'all every goddamn day. Right. I've been fucking FaceTiming Mayo every day. Just looking at her fucking self. And, and uh, she been hearing me sing R&B because I've been on my couch karaoke. What up, Mayo? Couch karaoke in the building, you know. Couch karaoke. <laughs> now that's Couch karaoke. Shit. Think I'll be in this old singing baby face. Where? I know my neighbors are like, what's, what, what, what's that poor guy? What's <laughs> <laughs> he going through? <laughs> oh, man. It would be dope if you could do a virtual karaoke jump where you could have one person moderate and then he would pick whoever goes next. And motherfuckers would play the song that they want and sing along. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> well, we can do that. That can happen. All I got to do is get a, five people to sign up, five songs, and then hit record, and then bring them in. That's actually possible. All right. What up, sir? Yeah, we should, we should see if we can figure some shit like that out. You know, because this Zoom platform, we can add up to 100 people, actually. To, we could literally add 100 people if we wanted to. To this broadcast um so we we can we we'll, we'll see if we can figure out something interesting another little okay. little kickback in that you know what i'm saying what, what what other topics we got jb what's our next topic all right so we are on let's see here uh our what the fuck story of the week and this one was crazy new the twins name this was after- crazy yeah, the twins named after COVID nineteen. Come on, man! Like, really? What the fuck? Yeah, they named COVID and Corona. That's that's more ghetto than uh, Melanie. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it obviously is, but. I mean, and their and their statement was kind of I don't know. 
I, I guess it's fine. They basically said, you know, we wanted to we wanted to take a positive memory from this whole traumatic experience and acknowledge. I mean, I imagine they went through hell trying to bring two healthy twins into this world during a corona impacted epidemic at a hospital. Yeah. I imagine yeah. that shit was bananas, honestly. So I can understand them dealing with what they dealt with. I don't know about naming my kids after a virus though, yeah. That's that's kinda like them Bamas who used to name their kid Chlamydia and shit. Yeah, and Jamie, make sure you you're looking at Facebook and seeing if any comments are coming up. I am looking um, at I am looking yeah. at Facebook. F just said, you know, his neighbors were having a whole goddamn party next door. They was going to 3 a.m. He had to actually go knock on the door like, nigga, like, chill. So people are partying during this pandemic. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's definitely happening. That's really weird. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't get this and, and I don't, I don't, I don't get naming your twins. It's just. It's just <laughs> weird, but you know. I mean, yeah, they're saying like, you know, all the work we had to do to bring them into the world safely. And it was during this particular pandemic. And we just, we, you know, the daughter's Corona, the son is COVID. It, that's a, it's, I mean, I kind of understand. I just wouldn't do it. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, F said is stupid as fuck, and uh, I kind of, yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> congratulations to him. You know, Mazel Tov is a boy and a girl, but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not naming my kids HIV and AIDS. No, 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 no. It just doesn't. It doesn't flow off the tongue correctly. It just doesn't flow. <laughs> no, no. No, no, They're gonna be ten years old and people gonna hear their names and be like, ah! And I'm like, <laughs> why are you screaming? Because you're named after death, motherfucker. You're named after death. That's why we're screaming. Absolutely. Um, but uh, uh, shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I said. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> uh, Jeremy said it's weird, but unex but expected. Sadly, F say you know. Uh, Exactly why they've seen a huge uptick of cases in the black community, because niggas ain't listening. Now that's true. People ain't listening, and I don't want to make this a platform we preaching too much, but we are the black CNN. And I'm gonna say this, in DC, the wolf opened up for seafood. Now I posted on my page last night that I was eating crab legs, juicy, juicy crab legs, in, in abundance. I had a, a feast. But I didn't go to the wharf and stand in line for hours to get it. And people in D.C. shouldn't be standing in the wharf, you know, this much space between people. That's not social distancing. They had to close the wharf, J.B., because people were not ab abiding by the, the rules and, re and regulations. And re they were just chilling. Like, I'm at the wharf, I want some crabs. And it's like, yo. I remember I was in Publix and a dude that worked in Publix got too close behind me. So close, I could hear him complaining like, nah, they're gonna have my check. I don't care, da, 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 da. And I turned around like, I, I'm gonna show you, I turned around like, think it's you this close to me? Right. Complaining about some check. And, and his coworker was like, back up from him, move back, move back. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Nigga, I'm about to knock you the fuck out like, why <laughs> right, the fuck right. close to me, dog? Right, right. Fucking so loud. I mean, that's that's what we used to say back in DC. Back up off me, young. <laughs> like, yeah, like, 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 back the fuck back up. up like, off, back the fuck up off. Shriven. <laughs> like, shriven. Yeah, that that's that's some. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 bad. That's that, that, that's something that happens to people to our frontline defenders who are used to going to work every day. Sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't seem as real to them because they haven't had any change in their life. Right. So they're going to work and they're still moving as regular. And, it, you know, sometimes it doesn't dawn on them, wait, 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 let me back up. Because they're so, 
they their routine hasn't broken. So I wasn't mad at him like 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 really wanting to fight him out of anger. It was more like I will fight you to make you back up. Well, like, yeah, I, but know. that's fair. That's fair though. I mean, it is what it is. Like he don't need to be doing that shit. Like like what are we talking about right now? Um, social distancing is everything, um, and we continuously learn. Well. Uh, Never mind. Let's not let's not get into all of that dumb shit. Um, no, oh let's not. Let's not be the dead horse. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> let's not go into that bullshit. Um, let, let, let's see what the kickbackers are saying. Um, I got you. Um, exactly. Why they've been? Uh, yep. That my birthday party for one year. A birthday party for a one year old. Oh wow. Oh, my birthday's in uh, less than two weeks. I know. My birthday's the seventeenth, y'all. Uh, well, I know. I'm explaining the Cash App and Pornhub videos. That's <laughs> what I want for my birthday. <laughs> Hook your brother up. <laughs> we we might have to we might have to come up with a virtual kickback for your birthday, new. Come up with something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to do something. <laughs> Cause no bullshit. Yeah, we we're not gonna be out of the woods yet by the seventeenth, my G. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, they they tried to cancel my birthday, JB. They tried to cancel my shit. Uh, they not canceling your birthday, new. No. I'm not gonna allow that to happen. <laughs> I'm just boom. Not. There it is. <laughs> JB said it's not happening. <laughs> not on my watch. <laughs> not on my watch. Fuck that. Fuck that, Joe. Anyway, new. Let's move on, dog. Let's move on. Porn hub, porn hub, print porn hub premium is free. Is Jeremy just uh, broke down for us? So yeah, yeah. Well, they anyway. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to our Donald Don't Be Dumb award. Don't be dumb. And this is something that I ran in and raved about in one of our chat groups earlier, new because it really just kind of gets on my nerves. And those are the conspiracy theorists, right? Um, so here's why we are giving y'all the Donald Don't Be Dumb Award in a nutshell. Um, if there is a conspiracy, if there is, so fucking what? How is that going to change your day-to-day -day life or how you survive this epidemic? Knowing that there's a conspiracy, what does that do for you? How does that get you an extra motherfucking mask or a vaccine or treatment or a cure? Guess what? It doesn't. It doesn't. How does it inure your finances to prevent any severe economic tragedy from the recession that is currently occurring how does knowing that it's a conspiracy or even talking about it or even investigating it helping you not at all right at all let's deal with whether or not it's a conspiracy after the shit is over if you so choose to do it and oh by the way I have several reasons to believe that it is not a conspiracy. Do you mind if I geek out for a second here? Just, to, just Geek to... out. Geek okay. out. Geek. So, so kickbackers, here it is. Here it is. Um, a lot of times conspiracy theories hop up and pop up about catastrophic events because people see those who are in positions of power taking material advantage of those circumstances sometimes too rapidly in their opinion sometimes seeing seeming like they knew or had foreknowledge that things were occurring before everyone else did right so we like to then believe that these individuals somehow knew about it ahead of time and then set themselves up to take advantage of it so I hate to break it to you folk people, you woke people, you conspiracy theorists out there, no matter how fast your fingers fly on your Google search keyboard, you are not going to be able to do enough research to get as much or more information than the rich and powerful are about any circumstance before or during or after it happens. 
They just have access to way more information than you do. So guess what, guys? If I had $500 million sitting in the bank and my Chinese associates over there who are handling my banking overseas, because if I've got $500 million, then I've got people working for me in China. That's just a motherfucking fact. If they were telling me that motherfuckers were getting sick all over the place in China and shit was fucked up and they were putting people in quarantine camps, guess what I would do? What is the first fucking thing I would do? Number one, I'd start getting me some motherfucking masks for my family. Number two, I'd start stocking up my goddamn house. And number three, I'd stop, I'd start dumping stock so I could take care of my cash reserves. Do any yep. of those things imply that I somehow knew about it before everybody else, or I made the virus, or helped make the virus, or was a party to special extra double secret government information? No, it does not. It is a coincidence of me taking advantage of an impending catastrophe because I learned about it before everybody else did because I was in a position to do so. That doesn't make it a conspiracy, guys. Right, it's just that simple, okay? Now, if you can find preceding evidence or things that actually happened or things that people actually said, not warnings about the virus, not warnings about a simulation in accordance with the pandemic, I'm talking about motherfuckers sitting around saying, yeah, we're gonna release this shit in China and then we're gonna watch the shit blow up and then we're gonna see what happens. Until you show me that tape, don't talk to me about conspiracy because I really don't want to hear it, my G. Yeah, the, the conspiracy theorists, um, and, and, and what, what irritates me is they're so arrogant. You don't know what's going on. You're, you, you know, you're gonna, you get a vaccine, and the vaccine's going to have a ship in it, and then that ship is going to follow you everywhere you go. And then I'm like, whoa, 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 man, relax. I'm trying to figure out how to survive. I'm in survival mode. You and your, you know, 5G towers. Like, I, I've heard the stories of the 5G towers causing a, a cancerous reaction. I've heard that. And I'm not even saying it's not true. I'm just saying, right now, we need to be figuring out how to battle whatever's happening. Whether it's from a 5G tower, whether it's from a bat, whether it's from eating whatever, we need to figure out how to battle that shit. First, then we can get into the, the the necessary origin, which is important. But but you telling me sending me eighteen documentaries about five G towers is not helping what's going on now, because I don't have the power to stop the the development of the five G towers. So that's not something that's useful to me. What's useful to me is how do I break a fever? What's useful to me is how do I keep my body hydrated? What's useful to me is how do I break down mucus so it doesn't harden around my lungs when I, and give me pneumonia? How do I do those things? Sometimes people are so smart, they're stupid. They're worried about the wrong things. And what I will say is take vitamin C, drink tea, gargle with salt or lemon or apple cider vinegar once or twice a day, um, more if you can. You know, read up on it. Don't. I'm not a medical expert. I might tell you do it eight times a day, and seven times is cool, but eight is one too many. So don't take my medical advice. I'll give you the information of what you need to do. You do the research on how often you need to do it, because I don't want to be responsible for giving wrong information. I do know that gargling with salt or gargling with lemon or gargling with apple cider vinegar are all helpful. It kills the, the virus in your throat if you go outside and come back in before it can travel. So I do recommend that. I recommend wiping down anything you buy from the grocery store. Um, if you spray it to a napkin and with like bleach on a napkin or on a towel and you wipe down your cereal box, you wipe down your bag of spinach, you wipe down your canned goods, with the bleach or whatever cleaner you're using, I would recommend a cleaner with bleach. I'm an expert. That's just what I would recommend and wipe everything down. I recommend having a dirty station and a clean station. 
everything with my dirty station, I will wipe down and then move it to my clean station. And then once that's done, I will go back to my dirty station and bleach and sanitize my dirty station so that that's clean now. Um, I recommend any fruits, you know, getting your, 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 your vitamin C, your oranges, your, you know, uh, lime is very big. People are saying lemon is cool, but they're saying lime is very important, going back to the doc, Dr. Sebi teachings. Um, and so let me, let me add one thing, because you, uh, you continually focus on uh, vitamins, which is excellent. So let me add just a couple of points about the vitamins. A lot of people tend to focus on um, vitamin C because of um, the, the, uh, the immunoboosting qualities it has and zinc for the same reasons. However, honestly, I would recommend a multivitamin um, in addition to the vitamin C because, um, you know, a multivitamin is going to provide you with a lot of other uh, minerals that are are used to produce um, enzymes, healing enzymes and proteins for your body. And that'll help boost your ability to build antibodies and to recover from illness. Um, you know, whenever I start feeling ill, the first thing I do is I double up on my vitamins, um, you know, and, which I've done so. But it always, I'm always impressed by how immediately the recovery starts to turn around when I do that, whenever I do that, including this time around. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> so, and I, I want to shout out. Um, I have several friends and associates. Uh, well, not several, but uh, more than a handful who have suffered from the coronavirus, being tested and positive, or from having symptoms without getting tested. And as you know, the most typical thing is to have a symptom and not be tested. That's typical. You know, only our people that had it early or have a certain financial status have been able to be tested. So I know a lot of people who have had symptoms but could not get tested and had to self-medicate. And I've had people who've been in the hospital on ventilators and then come home and continue to medicate themselves. And they've been gracious enough to give me information. And I shout them out. I won't say their names. Some of them may be watching right now. Uh, a lot of them are on my Facebook friends list and are very forthright. But I just won't reveal who they are. Absolutely. They can Absolutely. No, we no shout out, shout out to them. Um, many blessings and and prayers and thankfulness for their recovery, but also their experience and the information that they'll bring to bear. Um, and I look at people who are, have gotten over this, who have survived coronavirus as, you know, our best hope, because these are the people who are actually carrying the keys to the cure inside of their bodies right now. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and they're saying, you know, you know, drink your teas, you know, eat, you know, you, you get, your, get your vitamins, your vitamin C, vitamin B, your zinc. And they're saying, you know, do your breathing treatments, um, boiling a pot of water with, <laughs> with orange peels in it, sea salt. And, and inhaling it, the sitting over a pot of steaming water with we you know with orange peels or whatever in it, just breathing, helping yourself breathe. Um, yeah. Those breathing your airways it definitely yeah. opens up your airways considerably. And a lot of people, it's an old wives' tale, but I think it's kind of true too. It actually tends to break up mucus buildup in the in the in the lungs too. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know why it works. I'm not a medical expert, but I mean, I know. I know that it does. I used to have a humidifier in my crib uh, back in the day, um, and I was, you know, I, I didn't like the whole fire hazard thing. So they have these Mister Humidifiers that you can buy that are no heat, but they still create the vapor. I used to stand in front of that and breathe in that when I used to have problems with my sinuses and everything. That definitely works, absolutely works. And, you know, I'll recommend this, get an expectorant, which is like a mucus breakup. It'll Mucinex. break up the mucus. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, JB. Mucinex, Mucinex. Mucinex or the off-brand, yeah. It's, right. it's an expectorant, which will break down mucus so you can cough it up or so you can piss it out or shit it out, whatever. It'll break down the mucus. 
that's that that's important. If you start to feel like you have early symptoms, to start breaking down that mucus so it can't harden up in your lungs. And again, we're not doctors, we're not trying to be. We're just trying to give whatever information we can that can help because we do give a fuck. Real niggas here. We are not doctors. Do not take our word for word, but at least do some research on our words and get the correct information. Uh, New, where'd you go? I lost you for a second there. Um, I think we lost uh, New's connection briefly. We'll wait for him to join back up. But while we wait, let me read some of your comments. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, Cassandra, no problem. Um, I, you know, that's what we're here for. She said, thank you for the facts, JV. Um, Jeremy said, improvising exercise. Yeah, that's definitely a big one. Um, you know, <clears throat> social distancing is very, very important, meaning stay the fuck away from everybody, basically. But that doesn't necessarily mean stay in the house. Um, the CDC and other doctors actually recommend that people go outside and get fresh air and do exercise. However, they recommend that you do these things via social distancing, meaning that you know, you go outside, but you try and go to, you know, places where there aren't very many other people. Maybe just walk around your neighborhood a few times, maybe go jogging in a park or something like that. Um, I have actually been going to the park myself, taking my dog to play disc golf. And the way I've been able to social distance is because frankly not a whole lot of people play disc golf so i can just stay the fuck away from whoever else is out there you know what i'm saying um y'all hang on a second let me see what the hell is going on with new because I know these motherfuckers don't just want to see my ugly mug. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can bring him back up, guys. Hang on just a second. All right, let's see here. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so let's move on, um, because we were talking about the conspiracy theorists before, um, you know, <clears throat> what have y'all been doing during this whole quarantine and chill thing? What have y'all been watching? What have y'all been listening to? Me, it's been a shitload of movies and a shitload of YouTube videos. I probably learned more European, African, and Native American history in the last two weeks <laughs> than I have the whole of my life <laughs> watching all of these damn documentaries and shit. <laughs> um, oh my God, really? New said his phone died. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So so now he's watching me on Facebook trying to figure out how the fuck to get back on. All right, Nu, I got you, bruh. Hang on just a second. Good grief. Let's see here. Okay, I am going to get our good friend back onto the show. Just bear with me. For some reason, he didn't have his phone plugged in. Why did that happen? <laughs> anyway. All right, dude. Open up that email from the iPad, bro. You should be able to get in now. There we go, loading up. <laughs> This guy, you gotta love him. Anyway, <laughs> where were we? Hey, there he is. Hey. Anyway. I'm back. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I had a charger, I had a charger going 
and it seemed to be all, all good, but it wasn't. Yeah, okay, apparently not. So you had it yeah, good, but it wasn't really I working. I had the case, but it didn't work. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, my G. Me and the kickbackers hung out and, you know, talked a little shit while you were gone. It's all good. We're good now. I don't back now, god damn it. Yeah, yeah. And we ain't gone nowhere else, man. I was just tr- I was just pivoting to the Nipsey Hustle Awards. All right, well, let's go. Break it down. What we, what we got? All right. <clears throat> so our Nipsey Hustle Awards go to... Well, first of all, it goes to the Hall of Fame inductees this year for the uh, NBA. That would be Kobe Bean Bryant, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Um, You know, three three of my favorite players, you know, because we got to watch these guys come out of high school and college. You know what I'm saying? We got to watch their entire career beginning to end. Entire career. I watched Tim Duncan at Wake Forest. I don't watch him out of college sports, JB. You know that. It's very rare when I'm watching college sports. I watched Tim Duncan at Wake Forest. I remember when Tim Duncan was coming out of Wake, uh, Wake and they were saying he might be, he might, he might eventually become the greatest front, the greatest front line man of all time. Right? I remember them saying that shit about him when he was in college. And then he went to the He did four years. He's one of the last great four-year players. I don't know another great four-year player that came after Tim Duncan. They usually leave early. He did four years. I believe, and this is my hot take, he is the last of the great four-year players. And I'll, I'll, I'll throw it up against anybody. No, I'm I think saying. right. I think you're right, man. I think you're right. I think you're 100% right. And, I mean, they used to call him Mr. Fundamentals back in the day. Yeah, the big fundamentals. Shaq gave yeah. him everything. Yeah, I mean, he was, a mo- he was just a monster. And then, I mean, of course, you know, Kobe, like, enough said on that. Like, what, what more can be said? My God, I got rest in peace to Kobe being right. Rest in peace, GT. You know, one of the, the, the second greatest shooting guard of all time, only to Michael Jordan. Five Absolutely. championships, 18 time All Star, League MVP, Finals MVP, you know, all team defense, dunk champion, winner, um, WNBA supporter, activist. Um, you know, we love Kobe. Motivator, mentor, inspirer. Uh, love you, Kobe. You know, but yeah. all this crazy shit that happened, it's ironic that this will be your year to be eligible. But we all knew he was going first, first team, first battle, all the No question. It was never a question. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, and then last but certainly not least, KG, Kevin Garnett. The um, big ticket. Yeah. The big yeah. Ticket. And I mean, and you know, he, Again, he co- he comes from those Paul Pierce Celtics championship teams back in the title town days. You know, like he's 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 my guy. I love him. I love him. And I love KG. Um, right. I'm, I'm a, as, as everybody knows, I'm a Wizard fan, and the Wizards had the number four pick um, in the drafts that year, and they were going to pick Rasheed Wallace. Chris Webber said, no, go with Kevin Garnett. He's the one. The Wizards ignored him, picked Rasheed Wallace, traded Rasheed Wallace after one year, and Rasheed had a great career. He did not have KG's career. He didn't. There it is. And I remember wondering, should we have taken KG? I don't know. But looking back on it now, 20 <laughs> we should have took KG. But C. Wallace was amazing. Right. Don't get me wrong. Right. He but was he not wasn't KG, goddamn though. Kevin Garnett. There's no – He was not Kevin Garnett. Yeah, I mean, we that that's not even up for discussion, my G. <laughs> not even. Right. 
This guy shit. That, uh, <laughs> those are our first selection of Nipsey Hussle and the War Winners. And, and the there's another one. Yes, the player I got it. who the Boston Celtics selected the first black player ever in the NBA. The Jackie Robinson of the NBA. I feel like shit because I can't remember his name. But the first ever African American player to be selected to the NBA was by the Boston Celtics. And he goes in to the Hall of Fame this year. That's amazing. That's amazing. Did, did Red Auerbach do that? Because Red, Red, I believe so. Red, oh, fuck it. Huh? I, be, I believe so, Jamie. Yeah, Red Auerbach was a bad motherfucker. Um, Red, Red was was quietly like, quietly like an activist in the in the in the NBA. It's kind of crazy because you look at how yeah. he brought along Bill Russell's career and everything. Like he made Bill Russell a coach, a player coach. Exactly what I'm saying. Exactly what I'm saying. Amazing. Yeah. And, but Boston is known as a racist town, but Red Auerbach kind of shattered that mold. Yeah, I mean, well, Boston has had its moments of, of, of wokeness in its history, but they are few and far between. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Mm. I mean, I, I live there. Like, uh, you know, I know, I know what the fuck it is. Um, you know, it, anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, Lou, let's, uh, let's get to this. So, um, this is a story I actually really, really like, New. Um, and I, I'm, I'm pivoting to our next uh, Nipsey Hustle Award winner, if that's okay. 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 Um, so, um, this landlord in New York who had. I love this story. 80, 80 apartment buildings. I'm not 80 apartment buildings, 80 apartment units yes, in, yes, his, yes. in his catalog. Over 200, you know, uh, New York living in his, his units and he canceled rent for all of them for the entire month of april new come on man come on man like like what just brilliant just brilliant love it love it jb when i when i read that i was like oh i posted it this way nipsey hustle award winner I already knew. I didn't know who else would get it with him. I knew he was going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Love it. I'm pulling the article up now so we can Love. Say, so we can say it by name. Love. So hang on. Let me uh, let me grab his name. Real. Where the, where the fuck is it? Okay, there it is. Yeah. Mar Mario Salermo. Mario Salermo. Mario. Yeah, he posted a notice on the front doors of all of all of his buildings with the announcement that rent would be waived for the month of April. So, like, I mean, come on, man! Like, how, how does it get any better? How do you? How do you? I mean, just the Godfather, the boss. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to him! Shout out to him! And, yeah. I, and let's not minimize the loss he's going to take. Yeah, New York Apartments, my G. He's going to take a loss. New York Apartments, my G? Yeah. That's going to hurt. Yeah. But he didn't do it and then moved on with his life. He did it and tightened his belt behind it. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's beautiful, man. Like, even um, our, our complex has offered, you know, you know, payment deferrals and deferments and all of that. I just pay all my bills that I could pay. I pay well, I pay all my bills, and I'm broke as shit right now. This to be honest with y'all, I, I ain't got no money. I paid all my bills and I stocked up on food and supplies to last me the next two weeks. I feel good about it though, because I ain't going nowhere. I got a house full of food and a house full of supplies, and my bills are paid. What could be better? I would love to have. A thousand dollars in my pocket, and like, yeah, I, 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 if I felt like it, I could go in. Huh. If you I'm felt like it, you could do what? You ain't doing shit right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> JB. I ain't doing shit. I don't even need it. I right. pay my bills. I got plenty of food. I got drink. I got, you know, my little pleasantries. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Yeah, there it is. Just that simple. Just that simple. Shall we move on to the next? Let's move on. All right. <clears throat> so now we come to Netflix and chill. And I actually asked this a little earlier while you were doing your iPhone die bullshit. <laughs> um, but I reached out and said, what are, what are motherfuckers watching during the quarantine? So we actually have and answer. Uh, um, so, so uh, Jeremy said that he has been uh, he has been uh, watching X Files. Believe it or not, which is interesting. Oh shit! Yeah, X Files and your favorite show, which by the way has blown up all of Netflix. Uh, fucking Tiger King. That shit is <laughs> the whole world is like, oh my god, Tiger King. <laughs> Right, right. That shit is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was telling uh I was telling them I knew I've been watching a shitload of historical documentaries. You know, I know I know more about the history of Europe and about the history of pandemics now than you know a motherfucker should, quite quite honestly. <laughs> but then this week I got it I got back into my kung fu movies. I watched I watched Ip Man again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I watched Ip Man again. I watched uh, the Shaolin Temple again. I watched uh, shit. What was that? Oh, the Drunken Master. My favorite Jackie Chan movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched Tim Jones. What were you watching? Now. Not recently, but I did watch Into the Dragon a few weeks ago, like before shit got really critical condition. Um, but what I've been watching lately is um, what's up, Jason Bateman joke? Oh, Ozark. Ozark. I, I got back into Ozark. How long are you? Uh, I'm on episode two, so okay. don't know. Well, episode three, I guess. I'm gonna watch the first two. Dave Chappelle's Mark Twain now that was, event. Now that was I watched good. that. That's that on Netflix, good. everybody. I've been watching Paradise PD on Netflix, the cartoon. Um, it's, it's, it's hella ratchet. A little corny, but it's not as good as Big Mouth. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's in the vein of that level of ratchetness. It is. Um, but it's not as good. I agree. Um, I have been watching, to be honest, old NBA games. I watched old NBA series, playoffs. I watched the Bulls and the Pistons in 1990. <coughs> I watched the Bulls and the Lakers in 91. I watched the Bulls Blazers. I've been watching a lot of Bulls shit because I've been kind of like, I'm on Michael Jordan shit. This, like, was he really the best? Let me go back and remember. And I'm watching the Bulls and Knicks series. I watched a lot of NBA. Um, and other podcasts, other podcasts, Steven Jackson and what's my guy name? Matt Barnes have a podcast called All the Smoke. Okay. And they bring on NBA players and they have like real nigga talk. But this week they brought in our girl father. You know who hey. our girl is? Who our girl is, baby? DeAndre! <laughs> yeah, they wanted Deion Sanders this week. So, you know, hey, I'm going to watch that. And, yeah, and for those who don't know, me and DeAndre had the same birthday. Our birthday is April 17th. So me and her been talking back and forth like, what are we going to do? And she was like, we're going to travel. We're going to go to New York. We're going to go to Miami. We're going to go to the Bahamas. And the last message that sent her, she was like, we're going to be in the house. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> she finally gave up. <laughs> it was like, nigga, we're going to be in the house. It ain't shit popping. Right. But, um, you know, to know her now and have a relationship with her and to see her father, who's probably one of my favorite players of all time, and then see him in these new shows, I'm like, this is cool. Uh, that's this is tough. cool. Yeah. One of my favorite players and one of my favorite people yeah. is his daughter. I'm like, that's cool. 
Yeah, and she's a she's a real sweetie too. Real 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 sweetie. I uh I love Deandra. I love shout out to Deandra. I hope you watch it, baby. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, it. Shout, shout out Brittany too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no doubt, we'll no make doubt. it happen. Mm-hmm. Definitely shout out to both of them. Um and we'll have them on again up. once yeah. all this shit ends. Or maybe we'll just get them on Zoom. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. Why why not? Yeah, it'd be great. I I love it. I love it. What else we got, JB? Huh? What else we got? Um, real quick, real quick, um, Nick Cannon dropped the trailer for his Dr. C B uh uh documentary that's gonna be coming out soon. That's gonna be available on Netflix, right? New that doc- I believe so. And okay. and for those, you know, who follow know there was Nipsey Hustle's documentary at first. Nipsey passed away. Nick Cannon jumped in. I am currently drinking the Dr. Sebi tea. Sebi, CB, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'm, I'm drinking this tea. Um, that is the tea that I'm drinking during this pandemic. Right. It is for high blood pressure, but it's also for the nourishment of the body as well. I'm drinking that daily, just so you guys know. And um, shout out to Nick Cannon for continuing this. And a week ago is when we lost Nipsey. Right. So shout out to Nipsey Hussle. Um, my favorite rapper. I mean, I, I mean, I put him up there with Tupac and Jay-Z. It's my guy. Like my guy. I reached out to him on Twitter. I talked to him. And like I like my guy. Right. And because he's my guy, he was JB guy. Because I'm like, JB, you're a Nipsey. This is a Nipsey. Play this Nipsey. This is JB here in the yeah, so like, JB yeah. wound up loving. Well, yeah. am I wrong, JB? Did you wind like, up loving oh, Nipsey too? Of course, of course I did. Of course I did. I mean, you you dialed me out to this young cat who was just coming on the scene, and I was like, "Yo, this shit is like, yo, that that's excellent. <laughs> like, that's just excellent work. Like, what, what what the fuck more can you say? You know what I'm saying? So, um." Yeah, I mean, having Nick uh, continue what Nip was doing, I mean, and the big the big thing with Dr. Sebi or CB, uh, again, don't want to mispronounce or disrespect, but um, he actually went to federal court to sue because of the fact that he had documented cases where he was able to cure HIV and AIDS, and a gag order was placed on him by the government. So he sued because they were unwilling to acknowledge that this man had actually cured AIDS in different uh, patients. That's why the documentary is so compelling and amazing, Kickbackers. That's that's what makes it so, that's why we want to watch. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And you can go to drsabi.com or or for saying incorrectly, drcb.com to find out about his holistic treatments. Um, I, I have high blood pressure, so I've been, you know, taking the tea. But actually, I've been bullshitting on the tea. I bought it, but I ain't even drinking it. But I've been drinking it lately because I'm drinking tea every day, you know, warm liquid to break down mucus. So just in case I wind up with the corona, I, I am already breaking down the mucus. Like, like just keep it a buck with you. That's what I've been doing. Right. And, um, um, I, I, he, he said the number one illness or sickness was mucus. Mucus is what kills us. And let's do everything to get rid of mucus. And now that I know that this coronavirus is mucus based, I'm like, oh shit. Like, oh shit. If, if, if I had listened to everything he said prior to now, I would be 100% immune to coronavirus because all he taught was lifestyle, eating habits that prevent mucus. So if you be like, hey, this mucus disease is coming, I would have been like, fuck you, and you a <laughs> fuck. But I didn't follow him every step of the way. So I'm not 100% immune. And that's where, you know, but I am somewhat immune. I have studied some of it. And um, it, it leads me to believe that, like, he gave us the cure before this shit happened. Yeah. And that's why I'm drinking the tea now. 
Well, and and his and his a whole mucus thing was so was so critical because um, those of you who don't know, um, you know, most most HIV uh, patients who die from um, AIDS, which is the syndrome, the manifestation of the symptoms actually don't die from AIDS itself. They die from what are called secondary and oppor opportunistic infections. And most of those are upper respiratory infections, such as pneumonia. Again, pneumonia is a buildup of mucus in the lungs due to a bacterial infection called pneumococcus. And that's what kills a lot of AIDS patients. And again, I'm not speaking to you from bullshit or anything because that's what my brother died of. My brother didn't die of HIV AIDS. My brother died of pneumonia. So I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Rest in peace, Jimmy. There it is. There it is. There it is. I, I, I would say yeast is another, another killer. Um, let me look through the comments to see what we got going on here. Um, yeast is another killer. Um, Jeremy said he watched all of it. He actually was trying to watch more Ipmon and the, and play Tekken. Yeah, because they got um, that Ipmon he doing breathing and exercises. And F said, you know, yeast is another thing that kills you. Um, and so we've been all, I think, to me, it sent me a, a few videos of, on breathing. Um, and shout out to my sister-in-law, Keisha. She sent me some shit on breathing because when I was freaking out, just being quarantined, battling my depression and stressing, I've been kind of, you know, ah! and people started sending me shit. Um, I also want to say, F said, produced from high sugar foods like candy, juice, pastries, etc. They all cause yeast, and when you're high in yeast, it craves sugar. So that's what causes leaky gut, i.e., uh, causes other issues. All right, F, I see you. I don't know what, what you. Dre must have told you that. I know you don't know that shit on your own. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was about to say, <laughs> send us some articles, nigga. I don't know where where you getting all this information from. I'm like, damn, F. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dre now we, told now we know what F has been doing during his quarantine time. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I seen Shmi and the whole fam with with, with uh, masks on going to the store. Looking like a motherfucking Crip gang. Yeah. <laughs> they got Crips or Bloods? What's going on? Ban banditos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the bandanas everywhere. Uh -huh. F said Dr. Marsha. Yeah, I Dr. figured. Dr. Mom. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Mom. Dr. Mom. <laughs> Dr. Mom. <laughs> yeah, That's dude, dope. Putting all the info out there. <laughs> yeah. We had an episode with Mama Marsha and Dr. Mom and had them just Give us information. Now that that should be next week's show. I'm gonna see That's if that can goal. make that happen. I'm Have gonna have them both on. I'm gonna see if that can make that happen. That would be a lot of fun. That would be hell yeah. Excellent. And yeah. it'd be a lot of information. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and that we can give to people. Because I, I know what Dr. Mom has done, you let me know. But I know Marja, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say irresponsibly that she cured cancer. I'm just gonna say that someone had cancer and she gave them treatments and they didn't have it anymore. That's how I'll say that. So if we can get her insight and Dr. Mom's insight, I think that uh, it would be beneficial to our audience. I think that- Make it happen. I think it would be beneficial to our audience to see two black female doctors on camera, <laughs> like it just hell yeah, this dude, F make it happen. Powerful. JB make it happen. I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna reach out to Dr. Mom and see if she'll do it. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna reach out to her right after this show. Actually, well, actually, no, I have a couple of other meetings, but after, well, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll make it happen. All right, so, what's our next topic, JB? What else we got? That's that. Um, <clears throat> Jeremy said he agreed. F said, you so screen, I'm looking like a stagecoach robbery. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. They definitely did. 
So real quick, a note on Eargasm. I was out on the disc golf course today and I was rocking out to to our pod name kickback playlist. That show Okay. That show was cranking. Unfortunately though, it didn't get to any of the new shit. It kept playing the shit that I'd already heard. <laughs> but Talk to him about some of the new shit that's on that playlist, dude. I mean, we got Drake's new Tussie Roll, Tussie, whatever it's called, Tussie something. It ain't Tussie Roll, but it's like Tussie Shuffle. He got to dance with you, your left foot up, your right foot back, your left foot back, your right foot back. And, and he got one of those, which we can't do because we're all quarantined, but we could do it by ourselves. Right. Um, keep in mind that the weekend album is out. Keep in mind that Party Next Door's album is out. Keep in mind that Jesse Reyes' album is out. Um, and if you don't know what to listen to, keep in mind a Party Name Kickback playlist is updated every Friday. All you have to do is download it. Go to Apple Music, a Party Name Kickback Weekly. Go to Spotify, a pod name kickback weekly. There you go. You'll get the weekly update. I did a, a pod, I did a live today where I played music off of the podcast, and people was going crazy. <laughs> they loved it until I tried to go back to the 80s, say me, and it was like, wait a minute. Why are you the 80s music? I was like, it's the 80s, you gotta love it. It was like, no, we don't. <laughs> like nah, but the, the playlist was popping. It wasn't until I went back to the '80s and they was like, "No, we we got something else to do." I was like, "Oh shit!" So I know for a fact the playlist popping. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. That's what's up. <clears throat> Moving on, last topic, new, real quick. Um, the NFL has expanded the playoffs to 14 teams. You know, yeah. so, so if and when football starts back up later on this year, um, we're gonna get an extra, we're gonna get an extra wild card round game out mm -hmm. of this, which is gonna be really, really interesting. Cause they had kind of a, I mean, too many, too many teams who should be getting in are now getting in. It's kind of weird though, because half the goddamn league winds up in the playoffs at the end of the season. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, well it wasn't half the league until now. Now it is half the league. The NBA, like 60% of the teams make it. Um, you know, Baseball is stingy. It's only like 30% of the teams make it. In the NFL, it was like 45% of the teams make it. Now in the NFL, it's like 52%. So it's different. I don't like it. Um, they're also going to lose two teams having uh, bye weeks in the first round. Yes. Only one team will have the bye week. Yes. Now, this benefits my team the most. If you go over the last decade, if they had that extra spot, the Cowboys would have been in the playoffs every year. Yeah, that's so true. So it benefits me and my team the most. That's real. I still don't like it. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah, it, it amounts to one extra game in the wild card round. Um, honestly, the thing that I struggle with with this one is that now – two extra teams go without critical rest and healing and have to play another game in what is already a uh, long and very, very grueling season. Um, you know, and play like playoff, like injuries and in playoff games are bad, you know, like, you know, cause you're, you're already at the end of the year, your body is already broken down. Um, I'm, I'm keeping a buck with you. I don't like it either. I, I don't know that it's entirely necessary. It's, it looks like a yeah. money grab to me because we are literally talking about one extra game. Like, we're not adding another week. We're not adding an extra wrinkle. We are basically adding another game. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about that one. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. Um, I will say this. On 
wild card weekend to know that they got three games on Saturday instead of two, I'll be kind of happy about that. But I don't know what, what does that cost to you. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's the key. And what is that going to cost to you? Exactly. Exactly. And that's the part that concerns. I, I personally think that it will cost. Real talk. Like, I, I just, I, I think that it will. I think that it's going to be problematic. But, you know, we'll have to see, New. Yeah, we'll see. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you guys for, you know, we, we, we're doing it differently. We're doing it with Zoom and trying to put it on Facebook and trying to, you know, go live and trying to put it on the podcast sites as well and YouTube. And you've been patient. You've allowed us room to fuck up. <laughs> good advice. Room to <laughs> present with a product that is worthy of you. And we thank you. We um we're trying to give you the best information as well as entertain you without scaring the shit out of you, without stressing you out. There it without, is. Without without, you know, putting you in a bad mind state. We want you guys to be happy. Right. Joy and find your happiness through the gloom. That's our JB and my lion. That's our goal. That's what I'm saying. You're you're absolutely right, New. That's that's well. We're here with you. We're your family, and family builds each other up. They don't break each other down. Just simply put, boom. So we will be back next week. We will we'll, we'll probably still be social distancing, which means it will come in this form. I know a lot of you are like me, who haven't seen another person or been in contact and it's bothering you, and some of you are like JB, who can sit in the house by herself for a year, and <laughs> okay. We know me and JB represent the polar opposites of that. <laughs> uh, but we also, we represent that, but we're still here. We're still with you. We're there still fighting is. with you and for you, and we're still here. There it is. So we will talk about shows we like. We will talk about old Sports games you can watch, like the Pistons and the Bulls in the 90s, or the Ravens in 2001, or whatever. We will give you that information, and we will watch good TV and tell you about it, and we will FaceTime and joke with each other, and hopefully joke with you. And that that's why we're here, right, JB? There it is. I couldn't have said it any better myself. We're here. We'll be here. And we love you, and we love that you're here. And thank you for joining us, man. Good night, and God bless, man. We will see y'all next week, man. Uno, we out. <laughs> Peace to the nation of gods and earth. This guy. God.